Let's do two examples where we find the radius and interval of convergence of a power series. Here is the first. We want to use the ratio test, which we have practiced, but we will practice some more right now. We need absolute value AK plus 1 over AK. Okay, well, if you look at this power series, 5 to the K and K squared are always positive. So I just need absolute values on the X minus 1 part. This becomes 5 to the K plus 1, absolute value X minus 1 to the K plus 1, divided by K plus 1 squared. And then I divide by the Kth term. over k squared. Now I will invert, multiply, but I'm going to line stuff up. We will have a 5 to the k plus 1. We will have an x minus 1 to the k plus 1 in absolute value. And, oh, okay, in the denominator we have a k plus 1 squared. And then this is going to be in my numerator with the k squared. And then I will have a 5 to the k, absolute value x minus 1 to the k. And I did this on purpose because everything is lined up, as I mentioned. Now some things cancel. We have 5 in the numerator. We have x minus 1 in the numerator. And then we have this multiplied by k over k plus 1 quantity squared. Now, I'm using the ratio test, right? So I need to take a limit as k goes to infinity. Absolute value, ak plus 1 over ak. Well, I've simplified this already so that I am ready to take this limit. It's 5, absolute value x minus 1 times k over k plus 1 squared. But now 5 times absolute value x minus 1 has no k. And if you think about what's happening to this term as k goes to infinity, k over k plus 1 goes to 1. And so this term goes to 1 squared, which is 1. This limit is therefore 5 absolute value x minus 1. Now the ratio test says that this series converges provided this is less than 1. And we get absolute convergence in this case, as we know. This is what comes from the ratio test. Now, this is how I find my radius, because you see, I can just divide by 5 here. So we have absolute value x minus 1 less than 1 over 5 for convergence, which this tells us our R, capital R. The radius of convergence is one-fifth. Okay, now we have to think a little bit. Maybe I will, what color shows up? Maybe green shows up, I hope so. So the center here, if we look at this power series, the center is one which means the interval, once we know capital R is a fifth, the interval, oh, here's another green. Let's see if this shows up, maybe that's a little better. The interval will go at one fifth in each direction. So this would go to four fifths and six fifths. And what we know with a radius one fifth, we know that the power series converges on this open interval. So far we know this, right? That definitely it converges here and it will diverge outside here. And what is left to do is test the endpoints because we don't know yet that interval. We don't know yet if it includes four fifths or not, includes six fifths or not like this. Okay, so this is what's left. Maybe I'll put a line here. And so we will test the endpoints. I will write out the two power series, and then we'll look at them and figure out what's happening. 
At x equals 4 fifths, what's my power series? Well, I have a 5 to the k. We have a minus 1 fifth to the k over k squared. Okay, and then at x equals, oh, I should simplify this some, my apologies. These two multiplied together are minus one to the k. Okay, now that looks like something that we can evaluate quickly. At the other endpoint, we have a sum, k equals one to infinity, we have a five to the k, we have one fifth to the k over k squared, and this is a sum like this, just one over k squared. We're in great shape because, in fact, let's look at the series for six, x equals six over five first. You should know immediately what happens to this series. It is a <laughs> p series. p equals two, bigger than one, converges. Okay, maybe let's write that. So here, this is a p series. p equals two, bigger than one, converges. Now, what does this say for four over five? You see it's alternating, and if you take the absolute value, you get this p series. So at this endpoint, it converges absolutely because it's a p this is the absolute value of it, right? It's a p series, p equals two. Okay, so that converges absolutely. In particular, it converges. So what we see here is that both endpoints um, are included in the interval of convergence. And so I will write this below. The interval, this is our final part of the answer, is closed 4 over 5 to closed 6 over 5, like this. Okay, wonderful. Here's another example, and I tried to get rid of the glare over here. I apologize for that. But here's another power series, and we want to do the same thing. Find the radius and interval of convergence. And we will begin the same way with the ratio test, where we take absolute value ak plus 1 over ak. Again, this is all positive between 1 and infinity, so I really only need the absolute value on the x minus 4 part. Here we would have seven to the k plus two, k plus one, and then divided here, x minus four to the k over seven to the k plus one times k. And I will again invert, multiply, simplify, okay? I'm gonna have an x minus four to the k plus one, and in my denominator is this part. Okay, okay, what else is in my numerator? Well, I have a seven to the k plus one, and I have a k, and those correspond to, in my denominator, I have a seven to the k plus two, and a k plus one. And this is where I can cancel some things off. I wound up getting in my numerator, x minus four, in my denominator, seven, and then times k over k plus one. Okay, now I am ready to take a limit. If we take a limit, as k goes to infinity, absolute value, a k plus one over a k. This is a limit. Okay, here we go. This one is actually quite similar to the last limit in that this part's going to one and then this part doesn't have a K. So this limit is X minus four less over seven. In order to have convergence, 
by the ratio test. I need this less than one, okay? And so this would say, if we multiply by seven, capital R is seven. Okay, my radius is seven. Very nice. Now, let us go back. The center here is A equals four. So if I figure out, I move in each direction by seven, over here is going to be 11, and over here will be negative three. And I know it will, so far I have this as my interval, but I don't know anything about the endpoints. I need to test them, and I know outside this interval diverges. Okay, so just like in the last example, I will write the two power series at the two endpoints and then try to figure out what's going on. Okay, so the first one, maybe we will do minus three. We have a sum, one to infinity, we have negative seven to the k over seven to the k plus one times k. And this simplifies to minus one to the k over seven k. Okay, now what's the other endpoint, which is at 11, we have a sum k equals 1 to infinity, we will have like this, 7 to the k over 7 to the k plus 1 times k, and this becomes 1 over 7k. Okay, both of these we should be able to spot immediately in terms of what's going on. So at 11, this is a constant times the harmonic series. This diverges as it is a constant times the harmonic series. Okay, diverges, but at x equals minus three, now we have a constant times the alternating harmonic series. The alternating harmonic series converges, this converges as it is a constant times the alternating harmonic series. Times alternating We did the alternating harmonic series in class, although it's not too terribly hard to, to justify it again. If you needed to, it's an alternating series test. Okay, oops, series. So now we know our interval, and this one, it's open on one end and closed on the other. So it converges here, and it diverges here, so we include minus three, and we do not include 11 because the series does not converge there. This is the interval for this power series.